Hi, this is Greg with Walnut Ridge RV. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Puma 30R KQS. What we're going to do is kind of a, a basically an orientation video. This is the same type of orientation that you would get after your purchase um, with one of our technicians. Uh, so we're going to post these online so if you do forget anything um, you can always refer back to these videos and it gives you another avenue of things you might forget. So it gives you an answer. So first thing we have we're going to start at the front. You have your, your standard LCI tongue jack um, to getting on and off the hitch and also doing your front to back leveling. These are standard operation. They have an on and off switch on the front for your light. And then you have a simple extend and retract. Um, so that'll help get on and off your, on and off your truck. Um, and you can also use that as your leveling. So you don't want to level off your, your other jacks, which we'll get to shortly. Um, other than that, of course, you have your chains, your seven way and your breakaway cable all hooked in down here um, for hooking up to your tow vehicle. Behind that you have two 20 pound LP tanks. Both these tanks are going to usually be full after your pickup um, with us. And how these operate, you have um, up in the front you have a regulator and that operates one of two ways. It's an auto switch over regulator. So you can either use it with either one tank on and one tank off. And then what you do is if you look at the regulator it has a an arrow kind of on the front here so let's say i want to use it i want to leave this tank on but that one off i'll have the arrow pointing at the tank that i have on and when it has lp in it and it's full this will be green this this clear glass in front once that tank goes empty that'll go red your things will stop working you know that this tank's empty you can rotate it over to that tank turn it on shut this one off and then you can start using that tank or you can use it as the auto switchover function. So you can leave both tanks on and whichever arrow that that's pointing at, it'll draw off that tank first. Once that tank's empty, that will go red once again and it'll automatically start pulling from the other tank. Now when it does that, that gives, that kind of, you know, that way if you have your, uh, if this one did have a gas powered fridge, um, your fridge would keep running. Um, or if your furnace, something, you're using you know, some cool nights or something, that way your, your LP doesn't kick off on you. And, uh, and so it, it depends. You can run them whichever way you prefer. Some people like to leave one off. That way they always know they have a full tank. Because with doing it this way, you don't really know how much is in the other tank or how much it's used. So this just, it gives you two options that you can go from. Never point it in the middle. It will not pull from both tanks at once. Always have it one way or the other. That can cause a leak. I've seen that a few times, so I just wanted to make sure we touch on that. Behind that, you'll have one 12 volt deep cycle marine battery um, after purchase. Uh, that battery is a not maintenance free battery, so it does use distilled water. That's something you want to check every six to six months or at least once a year. I recommend doing the doing it more. You have two caps on the top. You pop those caps off and check the water level. If it is low, you fill it with distilled water. Um, if you don't do that, that can cause your, you can overboil the batteries, can cause you know loss of charge, things like that. So that's something you always want to check on as far as when you're doing maintenance and thanks to the RV. Um, around this side, of course, you have your VIN tag, and I'll tell you different information about your camper, your weights, your tire size, uh, pressure, and and so forth. You have a big storage right here in the front. We're gonna squeeze around this slide here. We've got another big storage right there. Now going over some maintenance on the slides, uh, there's two, two big aspects to the slides that you want to watch. Your rubber seals, these go all the way around the unit and they keep out water when it's out. So two things you need to do maintenance wise. Um, one is you get a can of um, rubber seal conditioner, it's just a foam spray basically. And you spray it on those seals you know, at least twice a year. If you can do it every couple months, it doesn't hurt, uh, but I like to at least do it every six months. And just spray that on there and let it sit. That'll help keep those seals conditioned um, and pliable so they don't crack and dry rot over years of being in the sun. Um, once they do that, you start getting pieces of chip off and then you get leaks on the inside and then, you know, it's a whole nother mess. Other than that, on this st style of slide you have this is a railed slide so underneath you have a big gear a big rail going into a motor with the gears and all that and this is what you'll want to lube under here with the teeth so you get some dry lube um, rv dry lube spray it on those teeth once again when you do the seals every six months or maybe even more and that'll help keep that condition so when it does move in after you spray it on you can run it in to help get some uh, around the gears and everything so that's your two biggest 
points for maintenance. You also want to sweep off your slides before you run them in. The way you know, tree limbs or walnuts, anything like that can damage the seals, the rubber, any of that up there. Next, we have an outside shower out here. It's pretty self-explanatory. It has a oh, hot and cold. It's got a stopper on it. That way you can shut the water flow off when you're using it. And then next we have our, our city water connection inlet. So this here, so when you're camping at a regular campground that has a full hookup, you're going to take your water hose. One thing you'll want to use is a pressure regulator. Uh, most of those regulators limit about 45, 50 PSI, and that's about as high as you want to run into a, a trailer. So you hook that regulator up at the faucet, the spigot itself, run your hose from that, either into a filter if you want to use a filter or directly into the unit, turn on the hose, and there you have an unlimited water supply just like you're at home. You don't have to do anything else. Um, on the other side, you have a fresh tank fill. So if you're somewhere boondocking and you don't have a water connection, you can fill that tank up and you'll use the water pump instead. And that'll pull from that tank. And it's basically the same thing. You just have a limited supply of water. I'll show you where that's at when we get over there. So these are two not to get confused. They are labeled city water connection, black tank flush. This one here is to flush out the sewer tank. You have three tanks on this unit. You have two grays and one black. The grays, gray one is usually your kitchen sink. Um, gray two is your bathroom sink, shower, or vice versa. And then you have your black tank, which is your toilet. Toilet will, is, is one of the biggest things to maintain um, on the unit. First thing, you always want to have water in the tank before you use it. You don't want to just use it and have uh, things piling up in there, toilet paper and whatnot, because it will cause odors in the tank it can cause your sensors not to read correctly um, so what you do with this sewer flush is after you're done say you're done camping you're up at the dump site you pull your black tank you've emptied it and now you've got some time you want to hook up a hose here turn it on and it's going to shoot water inside that tank and that's going to help clean it out so it's going to help um, spray off the pro the probes and um, overall just help with the conditions of the inside of the tank you also want to use chemicals um, as much as possible after each use if you can. When you get home, if you can, fill it up with water. Use um, different chemicals out there. Commando is one that we've been using down in our used department that works really well. Um, you let that sit for 24, 48 hours and then drain it and then sewer flush it. That'll help keep the tank from smelling over time. So down here below, you're going to have your actual dump sites, your dump stations. You have one, two, and three. Now these aren't in the best location. But you have one way back here, which is your black. So if you always look, you always have a big one. This one here is a three inch pipe. That's always your black tank. Um, so we always make sure that's closed before we use it. Let's say, because if I had it open and I had my cap on and I start using the toilet, all that water is going to hold right here. So when you go to take this cap off, all that black water is going to come flying out at you and you're not going to be happy. So before you start camping, always make sure all your valves are shut. So you have your black in the back, you have this gray here, which is probably your bathroom sink, and then this one here is going to be your kitchen sink. Um, when you do this, it's always best to do your black tank first, hook your hose up, put it in the ground, open your black tank, let it finish, close it, and then you can pull your grays at the same time. This will prevent black water backwashing into any of these, even though they have a long pipe, it's possible. But it also helps clean out your hose and your, your final turn here with a little bit cleaner water than uh, the black tank. Um, after you're done, close them. Um, and one thing you can do too is we've, we get a lot of calls on the sensors that they're always reading two thirds. Or, and that's very common in the RV industry. There's not a lot of ways around it, but one thing you can do is after you get home, if, you, if you've done that, you've sewer flushed, you've used chemicals and you're still not having that, you're still having that issue. You leave the cap off, and when you get home, open the black tank up and just let some air flow in there overnight, a couple days worth. Sometimes that'll help dry out the probes and it'll make your reading go back to normal. Okay, we're gonna move around to the other side. On this side, we just have an open storage here. Unless you have a washer dryer installed, then, uh, then it'll be blank. But if you don't have one, it's just nice big storage. You have your controls for your extended your, your electric jack, power stabilizers. These are stabilizers only, so you do not want to use these as levelers. You level from the front jack, you level from the uh, tires, side to side leveling. If you have to drive up one link's levelers or blocks or something like that, that'll help you. 
but you never want to use these as actual levelers by lifting the coach. So once you get it level, use a little foot level, put it in different spots, get it perfectly level. Then you can extend these down till they touch the ground, they snug up, and you're done. Don't put too much force on them, and always make sure they're up before you tow away. Of course, this has a power on and power uh, LED lights on it. You got speakers, outside speakers, outside lights in the speakers. You have outlets here if you wanted to plug in something, which is, it's actually made for a TV to go out here. You have a coax out, so you can watch the uh, antenna TV. If not, you just have a couple extra plugs. These on the outside are your furnace exhaust. So you basically have your exhaust coming out and going in. Um, not too much maintenance here. You might blow these out with a compressor um, every few months if you're doing some maintenance yourself. Um, it doesn't hurt because the best thing to do is put mud dauber screens over these. They just uh, hook on, they're really easy to put on and they prevent mud daubers, uh, bees, stink bugs are really bad this year. They get in there and they, uh, they can back up the squirrel cage. They can build nests that will break fins off the squirrel cage. I've seen that plenty. So put those screens on there. It's one of the best things you can do um, that you can do yourself. And every, every once in a while, stick an air gun in the top, blow it out, get some of that soot out of there. And then here's the fresh tank that I was talking about earlier with the water. So if you don't have city water or a full hookup site, you can fill this tank up, usually at the front of the park or right before you get there, or before you leave the house, fill that up. Um, and then you can turn your water pump on the inside and it'll run the same way as the other one. Um, you just have a limited supply of water. Typically 45 to 55 gallons, um, depending on the model. And then back here, you have your water heater. Now these are uh, Suburban Atwood, um, or Suburban, sorry, um, six gallon water heaters. They run off electric or gas, so that's 110 power or LP. Uh, you have options of turning them on. One, you have a switch out here on the outside. So this is something that always gets forgotten. We get a lot of calls about this in the summertime. There's a switch on the inside that says electric. You flip that on, nothing happens. That's because both switches have to be on in order for the electric to run. And if you're running LP, you just flip the switch on the inside, make sure your tank's on, water heater's full, and it'll light. You can hear it and you usually see it. Uh, so make sure both switches are on if you're using electric. You have an anode rod screwed in at the bottom. Um, that's how you drain your water heater. It's right here. It's an inch and a sixteenth socket. What you want to do is open your pressure relief valve. Got a lot of pressure in there. So if this is full of water and I went to take that plug out without doing that first, it's going to fly out of there and get you soaked and possibly hurt you. So always make sure you open that. You can take the socket, back that anode rod out. And you want to check that, um, that anode rod usually lasts a year, maybe maybe longer, depending on how bad the water was. Usually just replace them with you're done. If it doesn't look too bad, just a little corroded, you can take a wire brush, uh, scrape it off, put it back in there. But I always recommend draining the water heater after each use, that way the water doesn't sit, sit in there, get stagnant, and um, end up prolonging the, that'll help prolong the life of the anode rod also. Last thing we have on the outside, we've got our uh, little mini 110 fridge, 110 only, it doesn't run off the bubble. And then you have your outside kitchen area. It's got a hose in here, which plugs in over here on the side. Um, you have an infrared grill or a stove top. Basically, it comes with a certain pan that will only uh, work with this grill. So you have to put it on there. And it won't get hot until that pan's on there. Of course, uh, there's instructions on how to use that on the inside, but it plugs in also. There's a plug. You might make sure it's always plugged in. It's back in the back there. So you have your other jack power. This one does have a ladder on top so you can get to the roof, which is very important. Um, biggest thing I can recommend is you get up on your roof and check it every couple months. Um, that rubber up there can be ripped really easy by, let's say, a tree limb. Um, if you're driving through some, uh, some low-hanging country roads and uh, you scrape a limb, you'll never feel it in the vehicle, more than likely. I've, I've had plenty of uh, customers come in with ripped roofs and unfortunately they didn't know about it because they can't feel it. They don't know about it. So hop up there every time you get back from a trip, take a quick second to look around, make sure everything looks good. Um, the biggest thing is sealants. The sealants need to be checked every couple months and make sure that all the decor around all the vents and the lights and, every, the lights and everything up there look okay. Um, you want to, if you notice anything, it's it's plain white die core up on the roof. If you notice any splits or any cracks, any voids, bubbles, you'll want to go ahead and seal that up. 
Um, a lot of the manufacturers will not cover leaks after a certain period, a few months into that warranty because roof and sealants around lights and doors and windows, that is the maintenance of the customer. So that's something you definitely want to keep a track on. Uh, if you want to bring it to us once a year, you can, but in between then, it's best that you learn how to check sealants and look for cracks so you don't get any leaks. You don't want that headache. Uh, it's not fun. So. Um, that's really about it. You have more 110 outlets on the back. You have your detachable 50 amp power cord. Um, it's just unscrews. You can put it in the storage when you're done. And then back on that side, you have a coax in for satellite or cable if you're at a park that offers that or if you have a standalone dish. So let's go ahead and go inside. I'll show you around in there. First place we'll stop is at the convenience center. Um, so this is going to have pretty much all the controls for the inside of the unit. Starting at the top, you have when you're not plugged in, it'll tell you what your battery level is. It's, it's kind of accurate, it's kind of not. You can't always judge off this 100%, but it does give you a rough idea if your battery's getting low um, where it's at. From here, you have your fresh tank. It'll tell you what the tank on the, the uh, door side over there I was just telling you about, um, what its level's at. Your black tank's your toilet. Gray one's your bathroom sink shower. And gray two is your kitchen sink. So you can check those levels while you're camping, make sure you're not getting over full. Um, and here you have your water pump. If you are using the fresh tank, that's the only time you'll use that. If, you, if you're using a fresh tank or you're winterizing. If uh, you're hooked up to city water, you don't need to use that. Your water heater, now this is for the gas side. So if you want to use the water heater on LP, you flip that on, it'll light. You'll hear it ignite usually. You also have a fault light up here that'll go off once it lights. So if it comes back on and sometimes it takes a few tries, might have shut it off. Flip it back on, try it again, because the gas hasn't reached all the way back there if it's been off for a while. Now this one doesn't have an electric switch on the inside, it's only the one on the outside. Um, most of them do, so I, I, that's why I said that earlier. So if you want to run an all electric, just flip the switch on them. That was on the water heater itself. Switches in here are all for lights. You have awning lights, light one, light two, porch lights. Then you have your awning, extend and retract. Really simple, you just extend it out. Take it out as far as you can get. If you can't get it out all the way, that's okay. Um, if you're stuck against a tree, you can stop it. And when you bring it back in, just bring it all the way in until it snugs up. With the awnings, you want to make sure you, uh, if, if bad weather's coming or it's raining, windy, you want to make sure you get that rolled in. Wind will take this, uh, take those awnings off. It acts as one big parachute. Then you have your slide rooms, which are simple in and out mechanisms. Um, you run them all the way in, run them all the way out. Let's see, around here we have a radio down here, it's fairly simple, it's pretty, uh, DVD player, um, Bluetooth, it's got all that good stuff, CD player. It's got, the only thing really special is that you have two, um, two buttons over here for the one and two, which are the speakers. So you have your one, the sound bar here, and then two is the outside speakers. So if you want to have both of them on, or one of them off, um, it gives you the option. Um, you got a few different things up front, HDMI ends, you got charging ports out, uh, and then auxiliary inputs if you want to plug in something. So. You also have a fireplace down here while we're down here. Uh, it's an electric fireplace, so if, you, if it's getting chilly one night you don't want to crank the furnace on, this gives you an option to uh, heat up the coach, which they do fairly well. You've got different buttons up here, you got timer, you got low, high, and then you've got different lighting um, segments. And then you've got different flames. So two buttons up here are colors only. And basically you have high and low as, as far as temperature goes on this model. Plenty of storage down there. Um, you have your, your standard Greystone microwave. These are standard just like any house microwave. Um, pretty easy to operate. Then these new cooktop stoves. Pretty nice. If we had LP I'd show you how it lights. But basically you'll turn it to high. Pull in. And then... Um, you have your clicker over here, so hold the button in, turn it a few times until it actually ignites. ignites. Sometimes it takes a little while if the gas hasn't reached its way all the way up here. Uh, so that's pretty easy. Um, now the ovens are kind of the same way. These have igniters on them now. A lot of them still don't, so you can't always go buy this for every, for every RV, but this style of stove will light the oven. You just turn it to the flame, hold the button in, Give it a few clicks until you see a little flame at the very back. Once you see that flame, you can hold the button in for a few more seconds, let off, turn it to whatever temperature you like, and that will ignite the whole bar down here in a flame. Then you know it's lit, and you can go from there as far as cooking. Just got the blue light button up here. 
You have a GFI reset breaker in the kitchen. Um, any of the outlets that are near water, like the one there, um, it's usually six feet within water, the one outside, the one there by the window. Um, if one of those outlets is never working, you may come and check, make sure that the GFI didn't trip. If it's tripped, it'll have an orange light on it. If you see that, all you gotta do is just push in and reset it, just like most houses. Um, 12 volt uh, refrigerator in these. These are uh, kind of a newer model from Everchill. They run 12 volt constantly, so they don't use an inverter, they don't use 110. They're always running off the bat the battery basically so pretty nice you can run them while you're driving um keep them cool it's got a travel latch on it down here you have uh, your lp leak detector and carbon monoxide this detector is hardwired so it's always on so a big thing when you have your batteries let's say you're going to take this home you're not going to use the unit um, it's best to go ahead and disconnect the negative off the battery because this the backlighting to the radio and a couple little things are always they're hardwired so it'll drain your battery um, fairly quickly uh, so you want to make sure that you unplug the negative and that way your battery didn't go dead or you can have a battery disconnect installed that way you only have to flip the flip a key and make it a little easier next to that you have your breaker box this has all your fuses and all your breakers for your 110 side on the bottom and your um, your 12 volt up here most of it's labeled AC microwave converter AC prep, water heater, um, fireplace, different things. And then up here is your, your 12 volt side. So this is your lights, your water pump, uh, awnings, sm small things like that. With these, they usually will have a, uh, a light in them. So if one, a fuse does blow and it's trying to pull power from that, that circuit, a light will light up in here. So if you're, something's never not working, this is the first place you'd want to check. magnets on them now. A nice pantry there. Um, not too much else in these units. Um, that's, you got lights over here, you got USB outlets, you got Thomas Payne furniture. Your thermostat will go over real quick. It's pretty easy to work. It's a simple uh, Coleman style thermostat. They've been using this for years. It works really well. Um, you've got your system side and your fan side. So you got cool fan off and heat. If you want to run the, run the air conditioner, go to cool. I usually like to leave it on high, that way it cycles fast enough. And if it's, if it's really hot and it's on low, sometimes it'll freeze up. So it's always best to leave it on high. Um, then you just control your temperature. Heat's the same way, you'll flip it to heat. Make sure that it's still on auto. The only time you will ever flip this to on is if you're using just the fan side. We get calls uh, periodically during the summer where it's on cool, but they have it on high, and all it does is cycle the fan even though it's on cool. So always make sure that you have it on auto when you're using heat or air conditioning, and then on if you're using fan. Fairly simple operation. Um, bathroom in here is not too much, uh, that's not self-explanatory, you have the toilet. These fill up, if you just barely push on the foot lever, it'll fill it up if you have water going. Hey, there you go, got some antifreeze in there right now. It'll fill up and then you push all the way down to flush it. And it's always best to fill it up with water before you actually start using it. Um, biggest thing in the shower you can know is that it does have a travel lock. You'll always wanna make sure that lock is latched and latched in good before you start to travel. Or the glass won't be there when you get where you're going. You have a smoke detector above my head. That's a standard nine volt battery. Um, not too much else in the bedroom. We got a couple USB outlet chargers there. Light switch on the wall to control the two lights above me. The the light in the slide is uh, just got a push button. Got outlets on that side of the bed, and then you have emergency exits in the back. You see these periodically through the units. There's a couple of them. They're real simple to operate. You just pull down, push out and then you can pull the screen and jump out if you had to, or you can leave it open and get some air flowing through here just like that. And then other than that, the last thing is the, um, the washer and dryer cabinet that I was showing you earlier. Um, if you want to have us install a washer and dryer, we can, you can call the service department and get that done for you. And then you also have a backer up here for the TV. So if you did want to install a TV, kind of gives you an area of where the backer is and you got a coax up top to uh, plug into. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for this Puma 30 RKQS and uh, we'll see you next time.